Hi everyone, it's Andrea and here we are with volume 9 of the Marilyn Monroe scrapbook flip throughs. If you remember, last episode we left it partially at the auction, I want to say. Um, so let's have a look and see what we've got. Oh, we've got a nudie picture of her first, so we'll just skip over that very, very quickly. Again, this is the um, albums from W. Smith. So the, the, we are now on to the um, actual auction news that was in New York. So this one is the New York Daily um, News from Thursday, October 28th. And shows a picture of collector Bob Chagrin who bought the President Kennedy dress. Now, whether or not it's him that died a couple of years ago, I'm not sure. But the owner did die a couple of years ago and the dress resold and was purchased luckily by for us by Ripley's believe it or not so there's that and then there's uh the prices for her a few of the items that sold that day it's then continued over the page there's another picture of the president dress and uh, some of her scripts and other and a golden globe some of these things have now resold again so it does Next one is from USA Today, the 28th of October. Monroe dress a bargain at 1.3 million. I can't remember how much it sold for the next time. It was like, something like 4 million, 5 million, something like that. New York Times, 28th of October. Monroe auction is an icon's best friend. Again, it focuses on the happy birthday dress, the Mango shoes, which I can't pronounce, and the eternity band from Joe Tomaggio. There are other things in there, but those are the pictured items. We then have a article from the internet, which was CBC in for Coachell, auctioning off Marilyn Monroe. Again, it just goes over the stories of uh, things what happened and there's some people talking about it. It's quite a long article. There's quite a lot about the bits and pieces like her makeup kit which was bought by Ripley's. Then we're back to the New York paper. So we've got New York Times Friday the 29th 99 um, when this was when it was announced that Mariah Carey had bought the Marilyn's piano. And then we've got the New York Post Friday October the 29th. Marilyn Goldrush gavels to a 13.4 million finish. That's pretty much what it all went for in the end. Um, very, very odd. It's a very surreal experience, I must admit, when I was there. It was very surreal. A, to see it all and B, very surreal, but also very sad to see it all sold. Um, then we've got the New York Daily News on Friday the 29th of October 1999. Marilyn Mania. Two-day auction fetches... 3.4 million, 42 grand for bikinis. And so there's a picture of her there. And one of her tops, her poochie dress, uh, poochie top, this one, which originally sold for, four, well, for $75,000. A picture of Math, her, her doggy, her temporary driving license, her makeup kit, and some of those bikinis that were mentioned in the title. Over the next page. This is the New York Daily News, again, Friday the 29th of October, 30 million salute to Monroe. Marilyn Auction uh, draws wild sums. So again, it's just an overview of what happened at the auction. And here we've got uh, New York Daily News, same day, the meaning of Marilyn Madness. So it's all, there was just so much about this auction in there. Back to the UK papers now, Friday the 29th of October, the Daily Mirror. Some like it lots because they're very, very original in the UK with their headlines. Marilyn's 3.8 million sale. These items were from the first day. So we've got some dresses, the band, uh, program for the Kennedy salute, the dress, the piano and, and so on. And at least they're in colour, which is nice. Another internet uh, article which is Lycos News, Monroe auction, £250,000 or dollars for her makeup. Like I said, that was bought by Ripley's, believe it or not, and is on show in her in their Hollywood Museum. And then we've got Daily Mirror, Saturday the 30th of October 1999, 10 million for Marilyn's Hot Lots. Because <laughs> like I said, so original. And then we've got Newsday, which was the 31st of October, Liz Smith, um, Marilyn's classic touch. The Smith recently died in the last week or so, which is sad, but 
she was always a great person who really loved Marilyn, who really, you know, a great advocate for her. Uh, on the next page we've got um, something called Collecting Online from November 1999, which is Shandar Shops, The Selling of Marilyn. And it's, again, an overview of the auction and what things sold for, what was sold and so on. Earrings, the catalogue itself and the guides and, oh, there was just so much on it. We'll take a brief break from the auction news because it does continue in a minute to see the National Enquirer. November 2nd, 1990, here's looking at you, kid, and it's a picture of Marilyn B B and Bogart and Bacall at the premiere of How to Marry Me there. And it's just because that uh, Humphrey Bogart uh, seems to be appearing down uh, Marilyn's decolletage. And it's just pictures of, of people looking at, men looking at other women's boobs, basically. That's what it is, but... Uh, well, nothing's going to change, so... <laughs> Uh, the next one is from uh, CBC Infoculture. Again, this was from about the auction. We're back to and it says Canadian moguls buy up Marilyn Monroe. Um, this was the the first guy that's mentioned is uh, Jimmy Patterson. He's one of the owners of uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not. So it was about them. Um, And then it goes on to somebody else uh, from that area who bought Marion and stuff as well. We have an uh, 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 oh, I can't speak an advert for the Franklin Mint portrait dress up doll of Marilyn wearing the Kennedy dress. It's a beautiful dress. I don't have that one. Well, there's a lot of them I don't have. And then on this side, it's the Times from November the. 8th, 99 stars glitter for studio opening and this is for the Melbourne opening of Fox Studios where Kylie Minogue dressed up as Marilyn and did Diamonds and Girls Miss Random, why not? If everybody else does it so why can't Kylie, that's what I say. Daily Telegraph, Monday November the 8th, 99, Marilyn had a kind of elegant vulgarity about her. This is about a book about Billy Wilder, so um, yeah, uh, conversations with Billy Wilder, Cameron Crowe went and in, interviewed him and there's a lot about Marilyn in that section, obviously because Billy Wilder made two films with her. <coughs> As you can see it's quite a long one. Small bit about Marilyn there, about the, the Christie's auction from the Daily Mail. Back again to this side. Uh, November the 11th. Uh, 1999, Arthur Miller Monroe auction sick. So this is about Marilyn's third husband, Arthur Miller, not agreeing with the auction. He just didn't th think it was a good idea. But uh, it is what it is. I mean, yeah, there is so much money around. So, so, uh, unfortunately, it's unevenly distributed and, and some people got more money than cents. So if I had the money, yeah, I, I'm not going to lie, I'd buy some of the Marilyn's. Wouldn't, I really would. So on the next one is the Joplin Globe online edition, uh, titled Heap of Physis Blonde, Seneca Man Dedicates Room to Marilyn Monroe. And it's about a collector named Brandon Heydrich, uh, who collects, well, Marilyn, basically. So, and how he loves her and everything. So that's always, that's, I always like reading about other collectors. Um, the next page, we've got one tiny little article on here, which is Amateur Photographer, th the 20th of November, 99. Beaton's Marilyn fetches top whack. And this is about uh, just a photograph of Marilyn that sold. Again, it sold at uh, the Christie's auction. <laughs> Christie's Madness ma marches on at the moment. Um, this page is another, obviously, internet article from the LA Times, Marilyn, the Candle in the Wind. So this is basically a bit about the auction here, but also about her in general, about the conspiracies, about her wedding to Arthur Miller, and various bits and pieces in there. We're back to the auction here now from the National Enquirer from November 23rd. 
Auctions are a girl's best friend. What people paid for Marilyn's most personal memories. So we've got the, the piano, which was, as we said, Mariah Carey bought. The Kenny dress, which was bought by Bob Shagrin, which is now owned by Ripley's. Um, her prayer book, um, bikinis, wedding band, again her makeup, that was bought by Ripley's, that was bought by Ripley's and so on. Still more auction stuff on the next page which was from a British magazine that used to be published called Collect It and this was the, the December issue all about Marilyn and again we have a picture of the Kennedy dress. Uh, the Cecil Beaton picture and then all the other items that sold at the auction with a few prices and, the, and then there's some further uh, film sales that are coming up so it really was a major event this Christie's auction I don't think people realise how major it was now but when we look back on it it was it was absolutely massive there was so much hype around it. There was so much publicity. Christie's really went to town on it. Julian's did a good good job last year when they did theirs. They had a tour. They had a beautiful catalogue, which I couldn't afford to get. I still can't afford to get. I would still love to have the box set of catalogues. Maybe one day. But I just don't think there was the hype that surrounded last year's auction that there was that surrounded this Christie's auction. And possibly it was because this had never been seen before. The Christie's auction was a resale of most things, so it had been seen. There we go. Anyway. On to the next page. So this one is uh, Entertainment Weekly's Greatest Entertainers, Winter 1999. Marilyn Monroe was number three, so it's a nice big double spread on Marilyn with a picture of her by Bert Stern. It's really nice. Uh, we have a few little bits here and please, here in it. Oh, I can't speak today. I don't know what was wrong with me. Mira, Saturday, December the 4th, from 1000 Years of Champ. So it's Pin Up of the Millennium, number one, Marilyn Monroe, actor and actress of the Millennium, and Marilyn was in at number six. So she got in the top ten on both of those two polls, which is lovely. Back to the auction now, and uh, this one's National Enquirer, December 14th, 1999. Oprah duped by 1.5 million con woman. Big hearted guest owes fortune to investors and basically there was this lady who couldn't buy anything, got outbid on some things she wanted and somebody who bought a lot of hats gave her a hat or something but it turns out that that woman was a fraud and she was conning people out of money and that's what she used to buy her Marilyn items. So, I don't know whether it's true, it's from the National Enquirer so it's, <laughs> take it with a pinch of salt. Uh, next one is uh, the Birmingham Post from Saturday, December the 11th. Hello Prudes is goodbye Norma Jean. A celebrated artist is angry that her life-size sculpture of Marilyn Monroe in the nude has been covered up by prudish Midland Gallery bosses. And it was at the Malvern Theatre. Now, I never went to see that, even though it was only up the road at the time. Why? I don't know. But there we go. On the next page we have an advert for... The Seaman C25 um, from the Daily Mail, and I think that's Pauline Bailey, if I'm not much mistaken. I think. Might not be, might be somebody else. I get confused these days. Uh, Daily Mail, Wednesday, December the 29th, I think it is. It says um, Elvis crowned King of the Entertainers. Again, this was about the one that we saw before. Um, yeah, so. Basically, it was Elvis, Marilyn, and the Beatles. There you go. Next page is um, um, Daily Mail, Thursday, December the 31st, 1999. The days of Marilyn and lip to lip dancing. And it's just about things that happened and things people did in 1956. And why not? Next page is from Sunday Mirror. Personal Magazine, January the 2nd, 2000, get the look of the millennium, and it just says how to get the look of Marilyn, so um, buy a halter neck dress, and dye your hair, and wear Chanel number 5, basically. Um, 
And the next one is the mirror from Wednesday, January the 5th, year 2000. You're a fat head, Liz. And this is because of a, a magazine article in Allure where Liz Hurley said, um, I, I always thought she looked fabulous, but I'd kill myself if I was that fat. Um, which is ridiculous because Marilyn wasn't fat. Um, she was very, very slim. She was curvy, but she was slim. And we're not going to go into that here, but because it will be addressed later on, I'm pretty sure, in another article, which we will see at some point in one of these folders. Next page is the National Enquirer, January 4th, 2000. Now, they do sell the National Enquirer over in the UK, and uh, I used to work in a spa, so what I used to do is when the Enquirer came in, is I used to just go and flip through it very quickly to see if there was anything on Marilyn, if there was, I'd buy it. I don't bother anymore, just because I just don't have the time. So just a brief overview of Marilyn. Basic career. Not a very flattering portrait, but it's a lovely picture of her. Uh, next one, again, National Enquirer, so you can see that I was doing that. Uh, Marilyn Robed's brothers, JFK and Bobby, so we know that's not true now, so let's eye roll, face palm, and move on. Again, will there be a lot of moving on in this bit? Daily Mail, January 22nd, 2000, as Kennedy ogled Monroe, Monroe, you could smell the last in the air. Only now do we know the agony his wife was enduring. God knows why, because there was nothing going on between them. I think this is about a book that came out that year. It's usually about a book. And then again, there's a letter here from here. This is Daily Mail, Friday the 28th of January 2000. No deserted wife. Um, this is actually from a biographer named Sandra Shive, who wrote The Marilyn Scandal. And basically says, as Marilyn's bi biographer, I take issue with excerpts from the new book about the President Kennedy's infidelities. It's well documented that Kennedy was over Monroe by the time of Madden Square Garden Bash. And this part had to do with her constant marriage to Madden's alleged pregnancy, which is rubbish as well. So... It's just one person perpetuating another myth over another myth over another myth that the, the truth becomes so blurred. And the next one is uh, the Mail on Sunday, February the 13th, 2000, The Night I Slept With Marilyn. This is about Colin Clark's second book. Um, the first book was The Prince, The Showgirl and Me, which was a great uh, book, a uh, good overview of the filming of the the movie Prince and the Showgirl. His second book was called My Week with Marilyn and it's just a bizarre, bizarre story. But the pictures are nice. Again, uh, here we are, the Daily Mail, Monday, February the 14th, something like it. Not, again, Colin Clark. Um... <sighs> Just a bit about that. And then, um, again, giving Marilyn a miss. More about the Colin Clark, straight to the point. And this is a letter from Colin Clark who said, Peter McKay criticised me for sharing a bed with Marilyn Monroe not touching her. This is the first time I've been called a disgraceful cad for behaving like a perfect gentleman. So, again, take it all with a pinch of salt in this world, I tell you. Um, this one is from the LA Times, the 18th of February 2000, and this is an obituary for um, Eleanor Beebe Goddard, who was Marilyn's well, guardian's daughter, so um, foster sister, so she lived with her for a while. Um, so that's just a little brief overview about her. And at the back, I've just put this picture of Marilyn that was taken by Eve Arnold um, when I went to Beeman, Illinois, or Illinois. Um, to attend a exhibition of uh, President Lincoln thing and to judge a beard contest which is bizarre but fascinating. So that's it for book nine. So we are ploughing through them. I have been working on the one I'm currently doing which is 2009 and I still got loads to show you before we even get to 2009. It just goes to show how much has been published over her over the years. The biggest one is going to be, is the 1999 section at the moment, but 2012 was a massive bumper year for Marilyn Articles because it was the 50th anniversary of her death. So I am sort of looking forward to and both dreading getting to that in the scrapbooking um, because I know it's going to take a long time to do. It does take a long time to scrapbook. It takes hours um, just to do one. I spent a couple of hours on it yesterday. Maybe only putting about four or five articles just because of the rearranging. But anyway, 
that is a book nine. We will be back soon with book ten. You will notice it's a slightly different album on book ten, but that's enough for now. So I hope that you've enjoyed this Marilyn video. If you have, obviously leave me a comment, hit the like button, and don't forget to share and also subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. We've got a lot more Marilyn scrapbooks to get through. I've been asked to show my Marilyn collector's plates, which I will, but they're in the attic at the moment, and I'm not going up there until you know, next year, <laughs> but I will, I will do it once the baby's here and I, I can move around and I, I'll, uh, I'll go up there, I'll take the camera up and we'll film up there. Um, that's why it's called Andrea's Attic, you see, I've got so much stuff that is everywhere. <laughs> anyway, I will see you all soon with book 10. Have a lovely day and lots of Marilyn to you. Bye.